On today's show, the AA says EVs are the best runaround cars for Kiwis and the little pussy that ended up hiding in a Tesla Model X. Aww. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's brand new Ecotech Roundup show brought to you by New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned, we're serious about clean, green, renewable energy. Have you switched? Head to ecotricity.co.nz to join today. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. As the fastest electric car charging standard in use today, there's a lot of interest in Tesla's supercharger standard. And while it's technically open source, no other automaker yet has decided to use Tesla's supercharger standard in its vehicles. That could change, says Tesla CTO JB Straubel this week, who said that Tesla is currently in serious talks with several automakers about sharing the supercharger network. It's not clear who those automakers are, but in the past, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has said that any sharing would need to be on either a quid pro quo basis or the automaker in question would need to pony up for the use of Tesla's network. Also, it's worth noting here as a side that this week Tesla confirmed that existing Tesla customers who wish to continue to get unlimited supercharger access when switching cars would need to order a new Tesla Model S or Model X by the end of this year. Otherwise, they'll be on the same supercharger access policy as everyone else, free for the first 400 kilowatt hours per year and then pay to use after that. It's a perfectly reasonable move on Tesla's part, although with so many changes in supercharger policy in recent months, I've got to say it's confusing as hell. Here's to a simpler, more easily understandable supercharger policy in the future, Tesla. With several years of hydrogen fuel cell vehicle production under its belt, Hyundai has been working hard to promote its second generation fuel cell SUV, a vehicle we saw previewed this year in March as the FE fuel cell concept vehicle. Back then, most of us assumed that this was a vehicle Hyundai intended to make in at least mid-volumes, but this week we learned via the Business Journal that the company is planning to build just 1,400 units a year to start with. Well, that's far more than the double-digit production figures for the Hyundai Tucson fuel cell SUV, it's hardly the kind of volumes needed to make a hydrogen a viable alternative to petrol or diesel. In other words, expect the next generation FCV from Hyundai to be as just as much a compliance car as the current one, and the real volume vehicles to come in the form of plug-in models. Looks like electric is well and truly won, eh? Hey? Now there's a surprise. Not. As an automaker that's been promising us all kinds of electric vehicles for a very long time, but hasn't really done much to bring them to market, is Volkswagen, which confirmed this week that it will be bringing its ID Buzz minivan to market as a production car. Essentially a modern take on the iconic VW Microbus, the ID Buzz will be based on Volkswagen's new modular electric vehicle platform and offer 300 plus miles, just under 500 kilometers, of range per charge. But while the ID Buzz coming to market might excite you, don't hold off on buying your next electric car just yet. The ID Buzz will likely only enter production in 2022, a few years after the Volkswagen ID 5 seat car enters production in 2019. When it comes to justifying an electric car purchase, there are still plenty of people out there who hum and ha about the extra cost a plug-in car has over a standard petrol model. But, says the AA, most Kiwis looking to buy an electric car will end up paying the equivalent of just 30 cents per litre of fuel to power their new ride versus about two bucks per litre in a petrol car. And that, it says, means that an electric car makes more economic sense for most Kiwis than a petrol vehicle. Advocating buying an EV as your regular runabout and then hiring a petrol car for longer distance trips, the AA confirms what we've known all along. Buying an electric car is good for the environment and your wallet, especially if you power it using clean, green, renewable energy. And if you're interested in buying an EV yourself, don't forget to check out our fantastic EV buying guide over at ecotricity.co.nz. I'll put a link in the show notes. As those who follow Elon Musk will know, his latest transportation project, The Boring Company, seeks to build tunnels under major cities through which automated, electrically powered car carriers shuttle people's cars from one side of the city to the other at speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour, 125 mph. 
So far, some city planners, engineers and legislators have expressed doubt about the boring company and its goals. But this week, Elon Musk said Mayor Eric Garcetti of Los Angeles is interested in helping the boring company make its dream a reality. Garcetti even name-dropped Musk and the boring company during a recent ABC interview, reinforcing the idea that Los Angeles may get the first boring company tunnel. But, admitted Musk via Twitter this week, obtaining the permits for tunneling will be a lot harder than the technology itself. And while Garcetti is eager to help, there are a whole host of different agencies and stakeholders and landowners that will need to be convinced before it becomes reality. Watch this space. Currently known as Volvo's performance arm, Polestar has, to date, focused on squeezing extra horsepower out of Volvo engines for sporty performance on and off the racetrack. But this week, Volvo announced a rebranding of the Polestar brand as one which will be reserved exclusively for electrified performance Volvo models. Part of Volvo's push towards a future where all of its cars are powered exclusively by electricity. It is worth noting here that Volvo's press release uses the term electrified rather than electric, meaning that for now, it's most likely that the Polestar brand will be associated with high-end plug-in models, such as the Volvo XC90 T8 plug-in hybrid SUV, which is Volvo's flagship XC90. Eventually, I expect the Polestar brand to be all electric, but for now, it's a way for Volvo to produce high power, lower emission vehicles. But shouldn't Volvo just make all electric high performance models instead? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. With the Tesla Model 3 getting ever so close to launch, the plug-in world is soaking in every single little bit of detail about Tesla's latest car, that every new spy shot is being scrutinized in great detail to try and figure out what we can expect at launch. Well, this week is no exception, with a whole new slew of spy shots of Model 3s in the wild, including a shot taken of a Model 3's center console while the car was charging. That shot, published in several places online, shows a Model 3 with 95 miles of range remaining at about a third of a charge, suggesting that the overall range of the Model 3 could push 300 miles. Of course, it's not clear if this car is one fitted with an entry-level pack or not, but given the Model 3 was originally slated to hit a range of 215 miles and the Chevrolet Bolt EV exceeds that, I think it's conceivable Tesla is doing everything it can to squeeze out 300 miles per charge. I guess we're going to have to wait a few more weeks, though, to find out if that range is accurate for an entry-level Model 3 or not. Sorry. And finally, it's often joked that the internet is full of cats, or made of cats, and it seems so too is the Tesla Model X. Or rather, this one appears to be. Enter Tessie, a small orange kitten which somehow found its way into the wheel well of the luxury SUV. Luckily, the cat was safely removed and adopted by one of the Tesla technicians at the Tesla service center in question. So I guess that was another catastrophe averted. I'll show myself out. Which it's good timing because it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. Enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, hug a tree. <laughs> Bye!